Hello and welcome to the next installment of the Road to 4K iRating series where in iRacing, in the iRacing Le Mans series, we are basically trying to get ourselves to 4K iRating. Now between this video and the previous one back at Sebring, I've done a couple more races and managed to get myself up to an I rating of 3,889, so getting pretty close to the uh, the 3,900 mark. And then, unfortunately, in the previous race prior to this one, I went and lost 21 I rating, so we dropped down to 3,868. But for this particular race and this particular video, we've managed to qualify in third position. So we're looking in a pretty good, strong, solid position straight from the off and hopefully we can recover some of that I rating loss and hopefully pop ourselves back over the 3,900 mark. Uh, this is the final round in the uh, in the season here at the Silverstone GP circuit. It's a new one that they have in iRacing, the most up-to-date version of Silverstone. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's a track, well, my home track really, and one that I know pretty well. So. Feeling pretty confident here going into this race. Cars are just getting rolling now with the uh, the mini formation lap, and the uh, the safety car pulls off pretty quickly. And actually, uh, a little bit to my surprise, the uh, the HPD leader um, kind of bolts off pretty quickly. And as you can see, is keeping up with the tail end of the LMP1 field. They usually uh, keep gaps between each of the various different classes, but this guy's going for a different alternate approach. Safety car's already peeled in, so we'll be getting the green light pretty soon. We'll need to adjust the fuel map back up to uh, the highest setting of 8 to be running on uh, basically race pace fuel, and there is the green light straight away. So we're holding on to the third position that we started in, very, very close to the back of P2. We got kind of nerfed off the track a little bit there, so just settling in behind for the what would be completely flat out turn 1. Very close here, coming into the braking zone for turn 3, so we're going to go for the move down the inside, getting the car slowed down, just the tiniest of bits of contact there between myself and what was previously P2, which kind of met in and around the apex, running slightly different lines, but... Coming out onto the Wellington straight now, and a gap of one second to mark up in front is Maximilian Bailey, who was uh, the guy who had that slightest of brushes with, but that shouldn't have incurred any damage to either of our cars. Didn't actually pick up any uh, any safety rating penalty points for it, so it was a zero X in the end. The contact was so light, it's just giving me a flash of the lights. Probably a little bit frustrated that uh, I went for the move and we've kind of lost touch to uh, mark up in front and giving him a bit of a gap already. LMP1 cars, tail end of that field, still fairly close up in front, but these HBDs produce quite a bit of downforce in these high-speed corners here, so snaking through the Maggots and Beckett section now, not the best of runs going through there, could have been tighter to the apexes, pretty much every single one of those, but we've had a slightly better line than uh, Mark up in front. You see using the track IR5 there, just taking a glance over at the... Uh, the near useless uh, wing mirror that uh, is here on this HPD. But that track IR5 allows me to uh, glance around the cockpit and uh, basically look into the corners. That's what's causing that camera movement as I'm turning my own head and it's uh, translating that into the game. And if you want to hear my point of view in a video review on a track IR5, make sure you subscribe to the channel with the uh, bell notification as I uh, am planning on doing a video. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But back to the race. Coming into turn three, where we had that slight bit of contact a lap ago. And we're holding on to the back of uh, of P1. So this is pretty good. But we're uh, keeping in touch with him. Not really making too many mistakes. He's now under a second in front. 0.9, as you can see, by the relative down in the bottom right-hand corner. Maximilian's uh, keeping up with me especially on the straights and when I get pretty poor runs through corners like that one but we've got ourselves a reasonably decent exit there but of course he's much he's running much closer to the rear of my car so he's he's taken advantage of the uh, of the slipstream on the straights but dirty air is going to affect him in some of the turns such as this one here a very fast right hander of uh, of cops corner so let's see what we can do coming through Magus and Beckus now. So hopefully we can be a little bit tidier than we were last time round. And indeed, we are nailing the apexes so far. 
again a good run coming off the exit of the corner you can see visibly we're closing up onto the back of mark up in front we got that gap down to 0.7 so it certainly seems like I'm stronger through that sequence of corners than mark is which is good could potentially uh, be useful for us later on when we close up well, if we manage to close up right up onto the back of him potentially get an overtaking opportunity potentially can make a move coming down into Stowe but we've got to get there first. So there's a 146.6 on that previous lap, which is uh, pretty good. But uh, the tyre drop off is. It's not drastically severe here, but um, the best laps do tend to come from the first few laps on a fresh set of rubber, as uh, you kind of make use of all the grip and the high speed corners, all the downforce is being produced. So although the uh, the fuel load does bleed off and you're kind of able to retain some of the lap time and some of the speed there, it's only really in the uh, in the slower speed and medium speed corners do you kind of really make use of that. But there's quite a few high speed turns here at Silverstone, so that effect is kind of nullified, apart from in uh, the slower speed corners like that previous one in Luffield, coming out the exit of there, accelerating up towards uh, up towards Cops here. To accelerate just that marginally little bit quicker and uh, gain or save some lap time there and we got a pretty decent run going through cops there that time so a half a second off the back of Mark will be looking to get a good smooth run coming through Maggots and Beckett's here slightly off the apex there in the first part of Beckett's and then again that kind of compromised my line a little bit out the exit wasn't able to get on the throttle quite as well as I did on the previous lap but we're slowly edging our way closer and uh, Maximilian is still holding on to the back of us as well he's still very much there Francesc is uh, a little bit off off the back of us just over a second as we come through the last few corners those red sausage curbs really quite detrimental to, uh, to this car you kind of do need to stay clear of them and not well, avoid touching them where possible as uh, it's quite easy to damage the car on those. Either the bodywork, the front splitter, or uh, catching the floor on them, and they do unsettle the car a fair amount as well. So, obviously, want to stay clear of those where possible. Mark's managed to uh, eke out about 0.4 of a second again. So uh, he seems to be a little bit stronger than us in some places, but in others, we've got the measure over him. Managing to bring it back a little bit tighter for a good run off uh, the exit of Luffield there. And in some places, the uh, the relative board could be a little bit unreliable. Hopefully we can get another good run through Cops Corner there, which indeed we do. So clawed a little bit of the time back again another pretty good run going through Beckett seems my strongest point over Mark just able to carry a, a bit of a better line and uh, therefore allows me to carry a little bit more speed and get a better run coming off the sequence of turns so I'll keep on pushing hard trying to keep apply that pressure and not let him pull away as obviously at some point we're going to come across the GTE traffic and uh, this is a this is a pretty good circuit for uh, traffic actually the uh, obviously the high speed corners creates quite a big disparity between ourselves and the GTEs the LMP1 cars are pretty evenly matched in terms of uh, speed through the apexes of the high speed turns through the slower speed and uh, the medium speed corners they're marginally quicker than us but obviously they can accelerate off the turns much quicker than we can with the uh, with their hybrid so that's where they make up most of their lap time but uh, yeah the, the traffic is going to prove quite interesting as uh, Maximilian is getting pretty close to the back of us going through and into Brooklyn's that so it's pretty close to the back of us coming out the exit of uh, Luffield here, 0.3 seconds off our rear. 
and you can see Steiner close up in the slipstream as well and he's actually pulling out to have a bit of a look coming down the inside coming into Cops corner a little bit of contact between the two it's gone and shoved me out a little bit wide there he is to my right hand side he's just about nosed ahead of us so I'm gonna have to concede the position coming into Beckett's and let him go ahead here but we'll see if we can try and get a good line coming through which indeed we do and are able to get on the throttle much earlier and much harder than he was coming out the exit there coming through Chapel so we've got a bit of a run at him coming down the hangar straight here we're pretty much neck and neck, but I think he's got a slight straight line speed advantage than us. But we're trying to hang it around the outside here, coming through Stowe. A little bit of contact between the two of us. That's going to put me around into a slight half spin almost. Managing to hold on to that one and recover the car. I think he kind of ended up in a very similar situation as well. But that's allowed Francis to slip on through up into P2 now. And Mark is disappearing off into the distance. That's demoted us down into P4. That was quite frustrating. I felt like I left him just about enough room on the inside there for him to take that. He's having a little bit of a look at Francesc coming into turn one is uh, Maximilian. He's retained that third position that he was previously holding. So we've got to try and close up back onto the rear of these two guys and now try and find a way past both of them to get back up into uh, second place hopefully we won't lose too much time to mark up in front and make it too easy for him to uh, build a gap and consolidate his lead but yeah I think that's just a convergence of our two lines going through uh, Stowe there that just led to the contact possibly me just not quite leaving enough room on the inside of Maximilian not White being as tight to the curb as I was expecting. Can hang it around the outside there and defend from that. But uh, you can see Maximilian looking pretty racy on the back of Francesc. And is he going to go for the same move coming into Cops Corner? And indeed he is. Both of them running out wide. A little bit of contact between the two. That's going to shove them both off to the right-hand side of the circuit. That's going to put Maximilian now behind into fourth. And Francesc concedes the position as I had the momentum to just about manage to uh, slip ahead coming into Maggots and Beckett's there and that's put us back up into P2 but we're 5.2 seconds off the back of Mark now so we've got quite a bit of work to uh, close up Maximilian saying sorry in the uh, in the chat up above saying sorry to Francis who's now 1.2 seconds behind us so that's pretty ideal for us in a way because he's now just out of the uh, the slipstream range so that should relieve a little bit of pressure from my shoulders and uh, allow me to kind of keep my eyes forward a little bit more. Obviously take glances at the relative every now and then just to make sure that he's not getting too close. But it will allow me to uh, focus on trying to close that gap back up to Mark. But the two of them just making contact going through the old turn one of uh, Cops Corner there. I think similar thing again where Maximilian just didn't quite bleed off enough speed to hold a tight enough line. I think Francis gave him the room on the inside but they both kind of end, un, ended up understeering out wide and then Francis trying to rejoin back onto the track with Maximilian there they ended up just kind of brushing panels and uh, yeah almost almost spun each other around but both managed to obviously gather it back up and recover but Maximilian definitely came off worse there. I think it was very much instigated by him. He can pass here into Cops Corner, but it's very difficult because the braking zone, as you can see, is stupidly short and it's such a high-speed corner. So you do need to be very much up alongside. But uh, that's two moves in the space of two laps in that corner that he's, he's tried to make, and both times has ended up being in contact. So hopefully he's going to learn from that one and uh, will be a bit more patient you got a much better opportunity here, uh, coming up here into uh, up into Stoke but either way that's uh, provided a little bit of excitement already here in the uh, in the first seven laps and uh, just getting another off track there by very marginally running out wide and I've gone a little bit deep here coming into uh, into Vale the track limits here are a little bit interesting in some places they're pretty forgiving and quite nice in other places they're extremely strict where even if you go barely a millimeter over the white lines you're uh, you're you're getting a, a 1x other times you can quite easily go way over the uh, over the white lines with the entirety of the car 
and be fine. Like here, you can use all that green painted concrete or astroturf that's out there on the uh, exit of the corner. No problem at all. You won't get any uh, one X's for doing that. Likewise, running a little bit wide there in Brooklyn's, although obviously that's not the most ideal line. And then coming out of the exit of Luffield here, you can use all of that green concrete on the outside there as well without getting a one next. But for instance here, if you were to go slightly over onto the uh, the tarmac on the outside there, beyond that curbing, even though you're not gaining any kind of advantage at all, you'll get a, uh, a one X there. It's quite strict on the exit of uh, Cops Corner as well. Likewise with Stowe. And here you can kind of, you can really hammer the curbs like you see that I have been doing with some of my lines and not get a one X. Um, although you do run the risk of actually getting a slowdown if you go through there and it's a pretty hefty one as well. Two point, I think it's like 2.4 seconds or so, or 2.1 seconds usually is the slowdown if you go a little bit too far off on the inside of uh, the apexes through Magus and Beckett's. But either way, managed to learn where the, uh, where the limits are then we'll stick to them. seem to be losing a little bit of time to Mark at the moment although we're uh, gaining time and pulling away from Francesc behind and as you can see on the relative board we've also got the GTE traffic up ahead indicated by the uh, the pinky purpley uh, class colour blue is the HPD, yellow is the uh, LMP1 cars and then the pinky purple is the, uh, the GTEs also with their names and uh, numbers being in in blue indicates that they're a lap down so we're closing up onto the uh, the rear end of the GTE field which will be good hopefully we can use that to our advantage and uh, work some of the traffic to hopefully close up onto the back of Mark a little bit because as I mentioned in the previous video I feel pretty confident in my ability to work through the uh, through the traffic quite a bit of experience, a relatively patient head, I'm able to feel like I'm able to judge the traffic pretty well and time it round about right to kind of not lose too much time. Obviously, in a way you're kind of getting a little bit of luck and catching them in the right places and things like that, but if you catch them in the wrong places, it all very much depends on what you do, which dictates how much time exactly you do end up losing to other cars around, so it's a little bit of strategy and uh, craftsmanship in a way working in and around those areas and those are some of the areas that I feel pretty strong at me uh, certainly seems like my, my one lap pace my qualifying pace isn't all that great I mean by some people's standards it might be pretty good but for myself it certainly feels like one of my weakest points but me overall racecraft is and kind of st strategic head, shall I say, is uh, is where I feel like my strengths lie. I really do enjoy these uh, these longer endurance races, as they're an hour long, so it, it gives you opportunity to kind of plan out and deploy a bit of a strategy, and uh, kind of have multiple different scenarios kind of thrown at you. That isn't just basically sprint completely flat out to the flag obviously it is very much that kind of racing but there's other factors that come into play as well so Mark has already passed one of the GTE cars catching up to one about three and a half seconds or so before coming into uh, Cops Corner here so we're going to be pretty close coming through Maggots and Beckett's 2.2 seconds so I may need to ease a little bit coming through this section if I want to take it pretty quickly and not get caught by the GT car coming out through the exit and to be fair I probably could have gone a little bit more aggressive and just carried a little bit more of my uh, my usual speed because as you can see catching him at just the right point coming down the uh, the back straight there of hanger straight not the most ideal lines coming into uh, into Stowe we're past one, we've got two battling GTEs up in front. We've also got the LMP1 field now coming up behind as well because we've got the LMP1 leader here just nipping up the inside before the final turn. Which uh, 
forces me to stay wide a little bit, but didn't really impede me too much. Now we've got two GTEs. We're going to have to lift out slightly coming through turn one. Coming into turn two, we'll zip around the outside of one and take the uh, take the second under braking. That won't really interfere with them a little bit too much. Ran a little bit deep there. And then not the best of line coming through uh, turn four. Going through the loop either. It's got another LMP1 car coming up behind. But uh, he passes us on the straight, so it's not going to interfere there. 5.2 seconds to mark up ahead. He's at the very top of the relative board. The gap just kind of extending in the corners. For whatever reason. It's just the way that the... Uh, the relative board is uh, programmed. Sometimes the uh, the gaps fluctuate a little bit more than they actually should. So we've got a nice clean run here coming into into cops, which is good. And again, we're relatively close-ish, about two seconds off the back of a GTE coming into the Max and Beggett section. It's where you can lose a lot of time behind or getting caught behind a GTE car. If you time it just right, you can go around the outside of a GTE car if they hold their line very nicely. Uh, going through the Beckett's, the two Beckett's corners. But you can't do it in the Maggots ones, they're just a little bit too short. Generally, it's not the best idea to make the move either. So it's uh, pretty difficult having to look around the outside of a, a GTE car here coming into the final turn. A little bit of contact there between the two of us. That's gone on and settled the rear of my car a little bit. Zero car contact. Zero X, shall I say. On there. And coming into turn one, the rear end very, very loose. And we end up spinning round. Just about managed to uh, hold onto the brakes to prevent us from uh, rolling backwards out onto the track and into the path of the traffic. Coming back onto the circuit probably a little bit more aggressively than I should but we've now dropped down into 8th position in the uh, HBD class and I think that will probably be to, due to some damage at the rear of my car from that contact with the GTE I was trying to go around it, the outside of it in the uh, in the Vale chicane and uh, yeah just my line was really really tight coming into the uh, into the penultimate turn and he was taking the usual line and to be fair I think it was a bit of a, an ambitious move on my part I claim that as a, as my fault, my own wrongdoing I was trying to follow the LMP1 through a little bit who snuck around the outside and I thought the GTE was breaking a little bit early to kind of let me go around the outside but he just kind of held it in there not really wanting to lose too much time but that little bit of contact between the two of us seems to have damaged the rear of my car which means in these high speed corners not quite got the downforce at the rear that I would like which is why I ended up spinning going through turn one despite you know taking my usual line and you can see that the car is struggling a little bit there again as we're getting hard on the throttle so I'm going to have to dive into the pits here to get that uh, that damage fixed otherwise we're just going to end up having to kind of nurse the car around a little bit in the high speed turns potentially risk spinning once again down just under the 20 kilogram mark in terms of fuel. Struggling to get the car slowed down there for uh, the pit entry. Just about managing to get away with it. But we're pretty close to the pit window in taking the amount of fuel that we need to get to the uh, end of the race. Calculate it as uh, 25 kilograms that 25 or 26 kilograms that I usually need. I usually take a little bit more to uh, to uh, just be safe. So this is going to fill us up pretty much to the brim of what the car can actually hold. And as you can see, 14 seconds of optional repairs. I'm going to have to take that if I want the rear end to be uh, stable once again. So we're going to be stationary, losing time here. Dropping down into ninth position, the very back of the HBD field. So that mistake trying to work through the traffic... It's proven to be very, very costly, but hopefully we can do something in terms of uh, rescuing our race and working our way back through the field somewhat. Pace is pretty strong. Pace is up there for the uh, the top three. I think that's probably going to be just out of reach, but hopefully we can recover back up into the top five. We'll just uh, do a little tear off there on the visor to clear the, uh, the dirt that I built up in that first stint. 
So it'll give us nice clear vision. Once again, we'll come back out into some pretty clear air. Got the GTE car nine seconds up the road. And Cedric, the nearest HPD, who will be now in eighth position. It's 37 and a half seconds up the road. So I've got the work cut out for me, but obviously the other guys are going to need to make their pit stops as well. So hopefully being able to use some of this clear air whilst the other guys are trying to work through the GTE traffic still will allow me to uh, gain a little bit of time back. Obviously I've lost 14 seconds, but with the quite lucky, to be honest, pit entry where I came in a little bit hot and just over the, uh, over the speed limit, probably have uh, helped negate, negate some of that time lost especially in comparison to someone who approaches the uh, the pit entry a little bit more cautiously but these next few laps pretty crucial in fact the, re the remainder of the race is going to be pretty crucial because obviously I want to be trying to work our way back up and uh, get ourselves back up to at least fifth position if we can as Hopefully being in the top five in the class will help kind of reduce some of the damage in terms of I rating being lost. We were in a pretty good strong position running up in the, uh, well I was up in second place when the uh, the contact happened with that GTE car. Just being a little bit impatient and a little bit ambitious trying to go around the outside in Vale and then yeah compromising my own line and kind of running into the other guy who was had every right to take the line that he did. GTE cars are meant to hold their line going through the corners. Obviously when there's a car on your inside or outside you do kind of have to yield a little bit and concede that as the uh, the LMP1 leaders steps on through that. But yeah, that was uh, I fully put the blame on myself for that that error, that bit of contact and I paid the price for it. But nonetheless, we'll give up. We won't give up, sorry. We will not give up. We, <laughs> we will not give up. We shall push on. And we will see what we can do in terms of uh, recovering this race here. As the uh, LMP1 was kind of out over the grass. And that distracted me a little bit there going into, uh, into Cops Corner. Missed my uh, turning point by a couple of meters which pulled me off shy of the apex and then obviously trying to carry the speed through and also being in the dirty air gonna pick up my, myself another 1x obviously far from ideal but yeah still quite a long way to go just gotta hope they've got enough fuel to uh, last the remainder of the of the race distance as well so as I said in testing I kind of worked out to be about 25-26 kilograms of fuel that I'll need to take on board in the pit stop but when that actually comes comes to the race so sort of have various factors that affect the uh, affect the fuel load that you'll need to take obviously the race leader as well depending on how many times they lap you in the race the LMP1 uh, race leader that is how many times they lap you in the race will uh, affect how many laps you do and therefore how many laps of fuel you actually need so it's kind of dictated by uh, by their pace a little bit. So we allow another LMP1 car to go on through. But yeah, just looking to focus on the lap times. Get some good consistent laps going in. Previous one was a, uh, a mid-47, as you can see down in the bottom right-hand corner at the bottom of the, uh, the relative board. 147.5. actually on the uh, on the Motec display as well just below the uh, the fuel mix on the uh, left hand side in the middle you can see the delta to uh, my fastest lap at the moment it's uh, plus 0.4 so I'm 0.4 seconds off my fastest lap coming through Maggots and Beckett's now pretty good run going through there and it's pretty important that I got past that GTE before the sequence of corners as well to avoid losing too much time. You can see losing a bit of time on the straights to uh, my fastest lap delta which obviously would have come from being in the uh, in the slipstream of Mark in the early laps as well. So would have been a little bit quicker on the straights. Wouldn't have had to uh, have worried 
trying to drive the car through the uh, through the thicker, clean air. It's less resistance, less drag. You know, about half a second off, so 47.2. Hopefully we can continue with the uh, the low 47s, high 46s. And that should allow us to uh, catch up at a reasonable rate to uh, the guys who are previously running at the back of the HBD field. Obviously, I'm now at the back of it. But uh, as they're currently off the top of the relative board with uh, multiple cars between myself and uh, Cedric was the last person in P8. I have no idea as to how much or how quickly the uh, the gap is reducing. So we've got a blinking GTE car up in front. Which is uh, a little bit distracting and a little bit worrying. Slightly a little bit of oversteer there. Trying to get the traction down coming out the exit of Luffield. Yeah, this guy's in uh, running in P5. Kind of catch him at a uh, pretty bad point. It's going to be a little bit difficult, and yeah, I'm going to have to settle in behind, which is really not ideal. But here is uh, that move around the outside that you can do in uh, on GTE cars. Ideally, you want a little bit more space between yourself and the GTE car in approach to that, so you can keep a greater difference in speed before going around the outside. Obviously, you've got to time it right. Just about managed to slip on through there, but it did compromise my line quite heavily coming out the exit of Beckett's. Now onto the hangar straight, so we have lost time there. So this is going to be a high 40, well, low 48, I was going to say high 47, but it's a low 48 in the end. Or well, low to mid 48, shall I say. But. We've got a little bit of clear air now, and the uh, the next GT car is uh, 10 seconds up the road. Though we do have an LMP1 car coming up behind us, but it should pass us on the uh, on the Wellington straight here. And indeed he does. There he goes on the left-hand side. So that will give us a, a, the tiniest of slipstream boosts at the end of the straight there, going into Brooklyn's. Fortunately, two corners are medium speed and then into a slow speed corner, or slower speed corner. So being in the dirty air there doesn't really affect the grip too much. It will obviously a bit, but not anywhere near as much as safe coming through cops here. Got quite a bit of steering lock on there as well. Not quite 90 degrees, but kind of looking around about more 65, 70 or degrees so the uh, the grip is starting to uh, come away from the tyres as they're getting used and pushed to their extremes in those high downforce corners obviously you've got the uh, the little display there just above the cockpit of the car which obviously indicates the speed of the gears the brake and throttle inputs and you can see the steering input there as well you can see that in most corners kind of in and around 90 degrees so coming up behind the Porsche in, the, in turn one this is one of those places where there's quite a big disparity in in terms of speed between a GTE car and uh, a HBD and also got an LMP1 car coming up behind as well we've got Elvis coming out of the pit lane in his HBD uh, just popping up there as an LMP1 car goes on through so it was indicating that he was in 7th place on the uh, on the previous lap round going into the pits so it looks like we're coming back out in and around P8 uh, once all the pit stops are actually done so I think we're only really gaining one stop in the uh, we're holding on to us one spot in the pit stop phases. Elvis is down the inside of a GTE here, running a tighter line coming into uh, Cops Corner. I was holding back a little bit to try and carry a little bit more speed and momentum through to pass on the very short straight between Cops and uh, Mags and Beckett's hit. Maggots and Beckett's hit. As you can see, running a much tighter line, tidier line, should I say, 
than uh, Elvis was going through those sequence of turns. So starting to close up a little bit more now on the hangar straight, much closer to uh, 0 0.6 seconds. We've got an LMP1 car coming up behind, but fortunately he stays behind coming through Stoke. And instead, it's going to do it on the exit before uh, Club Chicane. Much tidier run than Elvis, though. Catches the uh, the big red sausage curb on the exit. So unsell the car a little bit, possibly cause him a little bit of damage. So we're now within half a second. And at the moment, it's still showing on P9. So Cedric hasn't pulled off into, uh, into the pit lane as of yet. Elvis has dropped from 7th uh, down into 8th position now. And as you can see, we are right there on the uh, on the rear of his car going through Village and the Loop. It's actually got a little bit of damage to the rear of his car. As you can see, the end plate a little bit skewed on the back of his car. Having a little bit of a think of a move coming into uh, Brooklyn's, but then thinking better of it. Just settling behind for the moment instead. Try and line ourselves up for a good exit here. We do indeed get a pretty good drive off as he's uh, taking some liberties with the uh, tarmac on the inside of Woodcut. I'm just going to have to follow him on through. Maggots and Beckers here as well, but we've got GTE coming up, coming up in front. So if we can get a good line coming through here and a good drive coming off, we could potentially make a move coming into into Stowe but ended up dropping back a little bit and trying to uh, get myself a bit of a run and a bit of momentum you can see he's uh, he's held a reasonable gap pretty close to the GTE there although he's had a pretty poor run coming through Stowe having a bit of a look to the inside under braking here just about managing to get the car slowed down and indeed he does concede the position Probably recognise that might have the uh, the pace to kind of run off into the distance and didn't really want to hold me up too much. So we've got ourselves up into eighth place, and at the top of the relative board, you can see Francesc up there, MP7. We were actually battling. Well, he was behind us uh, before we dove. Well, actually, before we had the contact and had the spin. He was a second and a half off the back of us when uh, when that happened, but he's now only actually 10 seconds up the road, so that's pretty good news for us. He's in seventh position. Obviously, he's, he's served his, uh, his mandatory pit stop so far. wonder what's happened to his race, whether we have just managed to hold on and we kind of regained that amount of time because, obviously, we had the spin and recovering back to the track would have cost us the whole heap of time there so something must have happened in his race at some point that has uh, also dropped him back but yeah seeing him there only well, it's now indicating 11 seconds but you can see the uh, the relative the gap is uh, fluctuating quite a bit but yeah seeing him about 10 seconds up the road is uh, it's fairly motivating to keep on pushing hard so we'll continue to uh, try and work the traffic as best as we can focus on the consistency and just see what happens towards the end of the race and him only actually being 10 seconds up the road I feel like if I can work the traf traffic a little bit better than he can and have a little bit of luck in and around those areas I might actually be able to close up onto the back of him and get into a position potentially to be there towards the end of the race. You can now actually see Cedric on the top of the relative board as well. That was previously over 30 odd seconds. It's now down to uh, down to 16 as you can see. Got an LMP1 car coming up behind us here which uh, is kind of slightly off-putting. Did go to her, make the move going through turn 5 left-hander there but it's coming across, taking my usual line. I think it was only just starting to get onto the hybrid rather than deploying it a little bit earlier like some of the uh, other LMP1 cars had been. So he wasn't quite able to sneak on through before I ended up shutting the door on him.
Good run through cops there. Good run through maggots. Going through Beckett's at the moment. And the line wasn't too bad. It could have been a little bit tighter to the final apex, but the line was actually pretty good and allowed me to get quite nicely onto the throttle. So an LMP1 car slipping up the inside, coming into uh, up into Stowe. Coming up on the, uh, another GTE, very similar position to uh, where I had the contact beforehand, but this time I think it would be better to actually be patient and just settle in behind. Have to hold it tight though, coming out the exit of the, uh, the final corner to slip by the Ferrari. So starting to out accelerate him. And here we go, one of the uh, HPDs just coming out of the pit lane in front was previously in P3 but obviously we're midway through the uh, the pit stop phases so all the order and everything is all a little bit jumbled up but we have ourselves a target immediately here in front of us so that's pretty good we've got something to focus on someone to try and uh, pass relatively quickly if we can I'm going to kind of double take at the, uh, the apex there of uh, of Brooklyn's it's not to go too far off on the inside and potentially pick up a, uh, a slowdown penalty so obviously that's going to be pretty detrimental in uh, in my pursuit to get back up through the field but now I just got to kind of size up Matthew in front and uh, see where we're stronger than him where his weaknesses are and uh, if we can potentially utilize some of that to our advantage. And as you can see, closed up quite a lot going through Cops, Maggots and Beckett's. It's put us right up onto the rear of his car. Not going to be close enough for the move coming into, uh, into Stowe. So I have to just follow him on through for the moment. But getting a pretty good run coming through the mid corner. Having a little bit of a look to the inside. But he just about manages to get onto the brakes a little bit later than us. Still manages to make the apex as well. It's pretty strong under brakes there. We've got a GTE car up in front here. As he's looking to the inside of him there. I'm going to have to try and follow him on through on the inside. And he came over to the left. That's going to push him out wide through the apex of turn one. And that's gone and uh, taken him offline a little bit. Sent him out wide and that's allowed me to slip on through. So a relatively easy pass in the end. But he's getting very close to the rear end of my car there. Going through the loop of turn four. That's actually gone uh, and dropped him off the back of me a little bit as well. I think it was just that duke left that he did to try and open up the corner for himself. He did that a little bit too late and kind of therefore missed the turning point that he needed to uh, be carrying the speed that he did and make it through turn one. But yeah, and running out a little bit wide and obviously having to back out the throttle a little bit to uh, try and bring it back on without jumping across the grass, which would have been pretty dangerous. So I slipped on through that. And that's going to be us up now up into P6, which is pretty good. And you can see we've got P4 and 5 not too far up the road. Frances is still in P4. It's about 8 seconds up the road. And about 7 seconds up the road is uh, Sven in P5. So that's pretty encouraging. You can actually see him visually up there, just passing a GTE car. They're kind of pretty close to one another, so hopefully if they're battling a little bit, that'd be good news for us. Obviously it'll slow them down, and hopefully allow us to uh, close up a little bit more, a little bit quicker and a little bit more easily. And hopefully be there towards the uh, the end of the race. It's got an LMP1 car lurking behind at the moment, but it'll pass quite easily here on the start-finish straight. A little bit of a twitch there under braking. It was braking quite hard, but the rear end was just starting to break away just the tiniest amount. Hence the little uh, the little snap under braking, which sent me deep because obviously therefore missed the uh, the turning point. But we held it on the circuit. And you can see that's uh, that's going to push us down 0.6 seconds off our uh, fastest lap delta. 
which is an ideal it's going to kind of going to cost us time to uh, the guys in front that we're trying to chase down also the guys behind as well is going to allow them to uh, hold a little bit closer to the rear of us but they are over a second and a half behind pushing hard there through cops corner taking just about the uh, the perfect amount and here we go coming up onto the back of a GTE car just going to have to follow in on through the Magus and Beckett section you can see just losing time having to be out of the throttle not taking the usual amount of speed and now down to 1.75 seconds off our fastest lap delta as indicated on the Motet display so it's going to cost us time there doing that but it's obviously the safer the safer option and even still we seem to be uh, closing up onto uh, the back of Sven and uh, Francesca a little bit who have actually uh, swapped positions on this lap as well Sven's managed to uh, get himself ahead of uh, Francesca so I think Francesca might have a little bit of damage somewhere which is affecting his uh, his lap times again an okayish run there through turns three and four and out of five not the best but uh, still fairly reasonable Turning in just a little bit too early there. On the inside of uh, Intercops. Using all the available curbing. Coming through Magus and Beckett's really attacking them. Car remains pretty stable going over those. Thanks to the thanks to the setup. And obviously the downforce as well, being at quite high speed. We're on uh, unsettle the airflow over and around the car a little bit but nothing too major as we're into a three wide situation with an LMP1 car slipping down our inside which is pretty foolish just costing us a uh, way more time than it should as he's hanging around the outside there he should have waited behind as well as the first to come up onto that Porsche that's going to cost us a whole heap of time probably a good second or so I think just by him doing that Whereas he probably would have only lost half that pass in the GTE if he stayed behind. Didn't get into the mix as well. So obviously we're all having to try to compromise for each other in terms of our lines. Avoid making contact. Just uh, clearing off a tear off there. Improve that visibility once again. A little bit of trail breaking through Brooklyn's and uh, and Luffield. So I'm trying to practice a little bit with the uh, T3P8 Pro add-on pedals that I have. The Thrustmaster is not load celled or anything like that. It's got the uh, conical braking mod on it. But um, yeah, where there isn't a huge amount of resistance to them, it can be pretty difficult to be very accurate with the pedals. It's kind of reflected in uh, somewhat with the way that I use them going through the corners in this car. As you see, I probably takes kind of almost like two presses on the pedal to kind of pick up the throttle out through the exit of corners. As you'll see, do it pretty much every single turn. It's something that I've I've done for years. I think it's mainly just. Just the way my feet work. I should catch the uh, the sausage curb on the outside there. But yeah, where did where there's no resistance to him, he kind of and I'm kind of lifting my foot off the obviously off the accelerator when when braking. Kind of the first the first stab is almost to get my foot back into the right position, and then obviously 
then balancing the throttle afterwards. You see, just did it there again. Rather than just picking it up in one smooth motion, and probably be a lot easier with um, much higher quality pedals to uh, actually be more accurate and kind of pick it up in one in one motion. As uh, I don't wear any shoes or anything with uh, with these pedals, just just a decent pair of uh, socks that aren't too slippery on the metal, and then with the braking. It's quite nice with the uh, the conical braking mod on it. It does give you pretty good feel, and I kind of learn with muscle memory as to the amount of braking that needs to be done for this car. But when it comes to easing off the brakes and kind of trail braking through corners, the much lighter, more sensitive inputs is uh, something that is a bit more difficult with uh, without that resistance there because. There's not really much resistance up to about 80% and then you hit the uh, the rubber of the conical braking mod and it's from there to the rest of the uh, pedals depletion that you get some resistance. So when braking hard it feels pretty good on this on this car because you basically you're you're applying the force up to the point of the uh, to the back of the pedal hitting the uh, that rubber stop that's behind there. And that brings you up to about 75-80%, which is basically right on the threshold for uh, the amount of braking that this car can do before it starts locking up. And you can see that uh, Francesc having a little bit of troubles with uh, with traffic. As you can see, he's now only one and a half seconds up the road, so we've gained quite a tremendous amount of time on him through the last sequence of corners. And even Sven as well, we've got him now down to four and a half seconds up ahead as 146.9 on the previous lap so we're eating into their gaps quite nicely as uh, an NMP1 car I think was having a bit of a look down the inside coming into uh, into Brooklyn's but it's too far back for uh, that to happen and work effectively he slips down the inside there though accelerating away we've also got a race leader coming through hopefully he can pass before we get to uh, cops just easing out the throttle a little bit making it a little bit easier for him so he's not slowing as much coming through the apex of that corner and not holding me up there but we've got quite an interesting scenario of a whole bunch of uh, LMP cars up in front in fact two of them are off one of them is Francesc as well and they also went whoa one of them was the GTE car that we just about managed to avoid as he was rejoining back onto the circuit and we've just about managed to snip past Francesc in that altercation as well so we're now up into P5 there goes the race leader who, um, who jumped on the brakes going through all of that and uh, yeah obviously lost some momentum but somehow I managed to filter my way through the uh, the incident unfolding without really losing too much time and carrying a lot of speed and momentum going on through the doors just opened up at just the right time but yeah that's now got me up into P5 and ahead of uh, Frances so I'm not really having to worry about trying to find a way past him and that's now allowing me to uh, focus on uh, Sven up in front as I think Francesca has got a little bit of damage he's probably got a little bit more damage now jumping across the uh, the grass not entirely sure if he actually made contact with the GTE car at this point we just saw that the two of them were off as uh, Francesca was trying to pass them through the maggots Beckett's complex but uh, yeah that's got us now up into up into fifth and we can pull away from him at a reasonable rate I think man that was lucky fortunately I managed to read it pretty well as it was unfolding I could see that two cars Francesca and uh, the GTE car were pretty close together and then I saw that they were both off that was an LMP1 car went around the outside of that and obviously the, the race leader it was just in front of me, slammed on the brakes as the GTE was coming back onto the circuit. I think they managed to avoid making contact with each other. But, uh, yeah, somehow I just managed to hold the tighter line going through and fortunately the GTE came across my nose just in time for me to avoid making contact with it. Oh, almost going into the back of the GTE car there. I was expecting to take his usual line going into, uh, into Stow and for me to go around the outside because it is possible there at that kind of distance 
if they turn in at their usual point, um, you could go around the outside without real too much of an issue and not really cost either of the two cars too much time. Obviously, the, the HPD loses a little bit, but it doesn't cost the GTE car any time. But I think he was uh, possibly anticipating me slipping up the inside and therefore hesitated upon turning in, which then meant that his car was basically right where I was going and wanted to be which forced me out a lot wider than it should have been cost us a bit of time there but we got away with uh, avoiding contact with him so now our attention focuses back on Sven once again he's in P4 at the moment 5 seconds up the road kind of into uh the last segment of the race tends to be about 34, 35 laps that uh, the HPDs tend to run. In fact, yeah, I've got the results up from uh, a couple of the races, and indeed it is 34 laps that the front runners tend to uh, tend to do. And then if you get lapped by the uh, LMP1 guys once more, then you end up doing 33. Uh, they tend to only really lap half of the uh, HPD field. Kind of all very much depends on the uh, the LMP1 leader's pace and then the uh, the pace of the uh, HPD drivers. But you can see that Sven is uh, getting caught up behind a, uh, a GTE car quite a bit here. Earlier on in the lap, he was five seconds up the road. That gap is now actually halved to just over two seconds. Maybe even a little bit less as we're coming through turn one and two, and he was getting kind of caught up behind this uh, this blinking Ferrari in turn one, where uh, obviously we can carry quite a lot more speed. We have a lot more downforce. So this is bringing us quite nicely into play in terms of uh, trying to hunt down Sven and trying to uh, take that fourth position away from him. It'd be great if we can uh, manage to do that. I think a podium is uh, out of reach as we kind of only really got three laps remaining. But also actually looking at the fuel, it's going to be pretty close and pretty tight there. You see it's just nipped under seven kilograms. I'm using at the moment an average of 2.03 per lap. So it all really depends on how many laps we actually need to do here as to whether or not I've got the fuel spot on or whether the car has been fueled a little bit short. Obviously in the pit stop I couldn't take any more fuel than I was able to. I filled the car right up to the brim. I asked the, uh, the pit strategy to put in 28 kilograms of fuel but uh, I didn't have enough room in the fuel tank for that 28 kilograms. Instead it was uh, 25 that they ended up putting in in this uh, GTE at just the wrong moment really coming through here slightly better line though coming through that right hander to allow us to slip up the inside going through the final turn to try and reduce the amount of time that I'm losing Sven's managed to get the gap back over to back over two seconds it's just the ebbs and flows of the multi-class racing this race has kind of just been multi-class racing in a nutshell really Sometimes it works against you, sometimes it works for you. You can have incidents with the traffic, both yourself, which cost you damage, put you down through the tail end of the field, force you to make a recovery drive to work back up and get into a uh, into a decent spot. Engineer just saying I've got two laps of fuel, which means I've got two, well, two and a half laps of fuel is when he gives that cue. So I'm hoping, well actually the fuel is going to be really, really tight. I'm hoping that the next lap is going to be the white flag lap going on to lap 33. If that is the case, then we'll be able to push hard and keep trying to uh, apply the pressure to Sven and hopefully pick up the, uh, the position on the final lap. But 
if it's not the white flag lap, we're going to have to uh, do some lifting and coasting and some fuel saving. I actually just caught a glimpse there of how much time is remaining, which is 1 minute and 47 seconds. So this isn't going to be the final lap of the race, this one that we're approaching. Or so I say, yeah, 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 the final lap of the race. And we've got 3.9 kilograms, 3.8. 3, 3.8, 3.7 as we're coming across the line. And we need to go for two more laps when we're using two kilograms of fuel per lap. So down goes the fuel mixture, down into fuel mix one. We're going to have to go into uh, full on preservation mode and try and crawl this car to the finish line, which means that I'm not going to be able to uh, try and mount an attack at Sven. He's going to disappear off into the distance. We start short shifting now. We're going to have to lift and coast as well, but hopefully we've got just about enough of a gap to the guys behind to uh, not lose this fifth place. This is really very much multi-class racing in a nutshell. Sometimes you cut the fuel really, really close. Other times you're able to uh, get it just about right and put plenty of fuel in. We've got six point six and a half seconds to Francesc behind in P6. So we've got a bit of room and a little bit of leeway here. But we're going to have to be clever as to uh, our lifting and coasting strategy to avoid losing too much time coming through Mags and Beckett. So we're just going to crawl it completely off throttle. Just, just downshift and just let the car gradually bleed, bleed off the speed naturally rather than touching the brakes at any point there. So none of the fuel was really wasted. But yeah, what drama at the end of the race here. This is going to be very, very interesting as the gap is now four and a half seconds between myself and Francesc behind. Obviously Sven is uh, pulling away up ahead. I'm not going to be able to keep up with him. I'm praying to God that this is going to be the white flag and indeed it is the engineer just saying that as well. Coming across start finish line now. We've got two kilograms of fuel remaining in the car. Down at 1.92 kilograms average used per lap. But it's not going to be quite enough to basically go full out around the remainder of the lap. It's, it's just going to be too margin marginal and the car's going to be uh, coughing and spluttering going across the line. It could potentially lose too much time. So I'm going to be a little bit careful here. Still do a little bit of fuel preservation just to make sure that I've got enough. This Francesc is now two and a half seconds behind, so that gap behind is coming down pretty rapidly. We've still got a good two-thirds of the lap remaining. So I'm just trying to be clever here with my lines and the fuel saving. Accelerating a little bit more naturally, but still keeping the fuel mix down in fuel mix one to avoid uh, using too much. Still lifting and coasting as you can see. Gap is now sub two seconds. This is going to be very, very tight coming towards the end. Obviously the critical point is going to be the uh, the final club chicane. That's probably going to be his best opportunity to overtake. Gap just over a second. As so we're on the run down towards Stowe. Still keeping it in fuel mix one just to make sure that I do make it to the end. Still lifting and coasting a little bit as I do not want the car to be coughing and spluttering over the start finish line, especially if he is right there behind me. It's just under a second coming into the braking zone here, so I'm not really at risk of him sending the move down the inside. So I just need to navigate these last couple of turns. Coming out through the exit with 0 0.4, 0 0.3 kilograms of fuel over the line. Just about managing to hold on to P5 there. That was pretty exciting stuff. And what a race that was. So let's take a look at these incidents. This is the one where I had the contact with the GT. So I came from pretty far back, to be honest. And then, yeah, there was the contact there. And the damage on the left-hand side, which uh, ended up causing me to spin going through turn one. Looking at it in slow motion. He gave plenty of room on the inside, to be fair. It was just me taking such a stupid line trying to nip up and slip up the inside so that was very much my fault and then this was the uh, 
incident between myself and Maximilian where he managed to nip up the inside coming into uh, Cops. It's just the tiniest of brushes there between the two of us that sent me out wide. And then, obviously we're battling a little bit, coming through Maggots and Beckett's here. I let him go on through and then just try and get myself the better line and get a much better run coming off the corner. So I get a little bit of a slipstream and then pull out of that as we get onto the hangar straight. Obviously, airflow equalizes over my car. He's got a slight straight line speed advantage, trying to hang it around the outside. And then there was that bit of contact. And yeah, both of us ended up getting to a... Uh, both getting sideways. Let's just take a look at that again. Just kind of a bit more slow motion. You can see him on the brakes. Trying to line myself up. The car's rotating quite nicely into the corner, but you can see I'm rotating and turning in a lot more aggressively than he is. He probably could have been tighter to the uh, the inside curb. So I felt like I was giving him enough room there on the outs on the inside. Uh, there's a car whips there, but obviously my line came across and uh, met with his as uh, he was understeering a bit, so hence the contact there. And then this was the incident that allowed me to get past Frances. So you can see him up ahead into a situation where both of them run across the grass and taking the line and just about managed to slip on through a gap. And obviously got the momentum to uh, pass Francesca on the straight, but we'll have a look at that again in slow motion just to see how close that actually was. So you can see the two of them up in front as we slow it down even more. BMW's just kind of run out wide and potentially nerf Francesca off. I'm not sure if there's any contact at that point. But both of them are rejoining back onto the circuit right at the apex as well. You can see the race leader, the LMP1 in front, hard on the brakes. Man, that was close there. That was close to the back of the GTE as well. So time, either timed that beautifully or got very, very lucky there that it didn't collect either of the two cars as it was very, very close. And then again with another shot, this time down on the left front. Suspension. You could see just how close that was there with those two. That was obviously at full speed. And we'll look at it once more in slow motion. So you can see him coming back across. Yeah, that was pretty close to the rear end of both cars. But as you saw, very nicely slipping on through with those gaps unfolding and somehow managed to keep that speed and momentum up and maintain that tight line. And then the cause of the incident was just the GTE car getting a little bit unsettled. And yeah, kind of, both of them kind of got zoned off. GTE running out wide and then Frances kind of getting caught in a slightly unusual situation being forced out wide. But that is going to be the end of the video and thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button for future content and hitting the bell notification means you won't miss out on any of that in the future but otherwise until the next video thank you very much have fun stay safe and take care